Have you ever made risotto where it clumped together more like a pilaf, less like a risotto? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to make velvety, creamy, porridge-like risotto, just like the restaurants do. Stick around. Hey guys, we're back from the market. I'm Shereen Pavlidis. If this is the first time you've been to my channel, welcome and Welcome to my kitchen. Each week I roll out a new fresh and easy recipe, so be sure to subscribe below and hit the dinner bell to receive those notifications. Today we are making butternut squash and sage risotto. This is velvety, this is creamy. I first learned how to make risotto from the Fountain Restaurant at the Four Seasons Hotel in Philadelphia, and later I went to culinary school in New York City. Technique is key. It's super easy. I'm gonna show you how, let's get started. All right, so at the grocery store, we got our squash. So I grabbed one of each. So this is your traditional butternut squash. This is a honey nut squash. Did you check out the description on this? It said you could eat the skin. I don't know about that. I think we'll have to taste it. But here's what you wanna do. You just wanna peel it. So you want about a pound. I like that these are small. But you could use any butternut squash. So we're just gonna peel it and cut it into bite-sized pieces. All right, so you want a good, sharp chef's knife. Look at that. That looks so beautiful. Look at that nice orange flesh. This is gonna be deliciously sweet. I love it. So you just wanna go straight down, just like that. And now we're gonna clean it out. So now, see those? You could actually roast those just like pumpkin seeds. But right now, I'm just gonna discard them. So I heated my oven to 400 degrees. So I wanna roast this butternut squash because I want that caramelization. That's gonna add great flavor to this risotto. We wanna cut them the same size because we want them to roast evenly. So we're just gonna toss the squash with the oil. So I'm using canola oil because it's a neutral flavor, high smoke point, which is ideal for roasting since we're gonna roast at a high temperature. Give it one more toss and into the oven it goes. Until we're gonna prep our shallots and our garlic and our sage. I like using shallots simply because I think that the flavor is a little more refined and delicate and sweeter. Now for the sage. Mmm, smell that, fresh sage. A little chefy tip, this is called chiffonade, thin ribbons, just like that. We're first gonna begin with warming the chicken stock. You could add vegetable stock. I like chicken stock, I feel like it has more flavor. So we're gonna put this on the back burner. It's gonna melt the butter, shallots. So we just wanna sweat the shallots for a couple minutes on a medium, medium low heat, a little pinch of salt, and a dash of pepper. Garlic, so we have two cloves of garlic that we minced earlier. So we just wanna sweat those out, 30 seconds. Once you smell the garlic, that's when you know it's released all of its flavor and it happens really quick. Now for our rice. Here we have a short grain rice, which you can use arborio or carnaroli. So we're just gonna toast it for about a minute. And now we're gonna deglaze with dry sherry. This is gonna add tremendous flavor. Our sage. Now we're just gonna ladle our chicken stock a little at a time. All right, so see where our rice is? So it's reducing the chicken stock. So we wanna make sure it stays nice and hydrated. So about one to two ladles, a little at a time. And then we'll just 
keep stirring. By having the chicken stock on the back burner, it keeps it nice and warm, so it allows each time we add that chicken stock, we don't have to wait for the temperature to come back up. It continues cooking right away. Halfway through the cooking, your butternut squash will be out of the oven and ready to go. So now this is when we're gonna add it. So I like to do it in bite-sized pieces because I like the texture rather than cooking it whole and pureeing it. And now we're just gonna smash it with the back of your ladle or with your spoon just to give it that sort of pureed but yet nice, nice little bite-sized pieces in there for texture. And it really makes a beautiful color too. Now for the last ladle of our chicken stock. I'm going to reduce this by about half and then we're going to pull it off the heat. And I'll show you how we're going to finish it. Parmigiano-Reggiano. And mascarpone cheese or mascarpone, however you like to say it. So this is what's gonna really round this out and make it super creamy. So we're gonna cut the heat, season it with salt and pepper, and we're done. So I included the recipe down in the description and I give you all the measurements. All right, so now we're gonna serve immediately. I have a huge bowl here, so I added some fresh sage on top. So if you want more of my fresh and easy restaurant quality recipes, be sure to subscribe, hit the dinner bell so you don't miss notifications. This recipe is below in the description, so I give you all the measurements. If you like the recipe there and you find it easy to follow along as you're cooking, let me know. Comment in the comment box below or let me know if you'd rather me put it on my website. Enjoy. So here's a piece of that skin. So now they said it's edible. I'm assuming after cook, but let's give it a whirl. Okay, totally not edible. Don't do it. But I am gonna throw it on the sheet pan. I wanna see what it does. Taste this. Huh, it's super crunchy. Okay, I heard that back. It's totally edible. Wow, it's like a chip. Pretty good. All right, you can peel it. Peel it, put it on a sheet pan with a little bit of oil, salt. You can make butternut squash chips. All right, that was a bonus. <laughs>